Behold my stevia tower. Grown from completely cloned stevia I showed in this video, it is way overgrown and I pretty much let it do what it wants for one key reason. Seeds. Stevia seeds are expensive. So when I saw this start to produce flowers, I got excited because that means free seeds. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to identify them, pollinate them, know when to harvest them, and some general tips and tricks on storage and processing so you get the best germination rates. Infinite stevia glitch number two. Stevia is a hermaphrodite which means that the flowers contain both the male part, the stamen, and the female part, the pistils. These are also called stigmas and anthers. And these grow in little clusters called inflorescences, which essentially turn into seeds. And if you take some of these white flowers and you just even tap them over your hand, you're gonna see all the little white specks, which are what is put out by the male part. And that's what we need to get into the center of the flowers and that's what will cause it to begin to produce those seeds. Having wind, movement, even bugs can help it pollinate itself. Now the way we know when the seeds are ready to be harvested is by looking at how dry the stems and petals are. If you look up here, we have a lot of new white flowers starting to come in, but down here in this section, the stems, the petals, they're starting to dry out. The stems will even turn brown themselves and fall over. Ideally, it should be so dry that you can just come and sort of shake the stem and the seeds will fall out. You could chop the whole stem, pull it off and do it separately. And that seems to be what's working for me. You're now officially left with these nice little bunches of stevia seeds. Now the few things you need to know about the seeds, technically, if it's so dry, the seeds are just falling out, they can just be put right into the ground and you can begin germination. However, if you give them more time to dry, it should increase your germination rates. And you can do this by laying it out in a dry, well-ventilated surface. You don't want it in direct sun because that can actually decrease your germination rates. They still have a lot of those fluffy things that help them carry in the wind. But I'm gonna go ahead and put these in an area where they can dry. And once they're dried out, I'm gonna put them in something airtight, which is important. You could also put them into a jar and seal that off. I've even read online that some people will put in some of those silicon gel packets. And you could let them dry for up to another two weeks. By giving them a little bit more time, especially if any of your seeds maybe were pulled a little prematurely, maybe they're still a little green, is all going to help those germination rates. All right, now what I'm gonna do is try and get as many seeds off of this as possible before taking this down. I'm cleaning all my towers right now. If you wanna learn how to clean a tower garden, check out this new video. And what's left, I'm gonna split between drying and cloning. I'm gonna try and get like three dozen clones off of this. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, if it brought you value, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel and I'll see you in the next one.